Hello, this is Christy, and this is the next video in Zara Designer Pro X. And we are exploring the toolbar, this bar on the left here with all the instruments. And in today's episode, we will look at this section here just below the selector. We covered that in the previous episode. So this second section here, if you notice, it has a little arrow. So when you hover, you have all these tools hidden away behind this button here. So we will explore this menu here today. Before we start, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe now and you will get new tutorials and videos in uh, uh, your notifications as I upload them. Thank you very much for watching. And now let's have a look at this um, tool here. Uh, let me just create a new document. So this is a blank page here. And the first tool we will look at is this one, this first one here. It's called the Region Painter tool. The Region Painter tool uh, allows you to sort of paint an area or an object or maybe a photo that you want to select. So it creates selections, something like Photoshop you can choose uh, an appropriate size of the nib here so if i select this you can choose the size here and um, it creates a selection so for that let's try to create a, a simple object like this so this is a bit confusing because zara is trying to behave a little bit like photoshop but actually it is a vector drawing vector illustration software so at some time some of these tools seem like they try to do both things, um, combining bitmaps and, and shapes and vector graphics and kind of working with both, which is kind of surprising when you first use it. You go, is this is this a bitmap editing software or is it a, a, a vector editing software? Well, it's kind of both. So let me illustrate. So this is obviously a vector object, right? So there's no surprise here. Let me just make it green, for example. And I have it selected and I'm going to select the region painter tool. And look what happens. I just draw on top of this object and it creates a selection. The, the, the size of this selection, if I zoom in here, it is the size of the nib from the top. So if I increase the size of this object, if this nib, you see my uh, red circle here, it gets bigger. And of course, when I draw, I create this selection, this marquee on my object. Now, this is, look what happens. This is, my object is a vector object. So <laughs> if I control X to cut, for example, this basically cuts the shape out of my object which is really weird because it feels like, you know, in, in Photoshop, you're selecting pixels with this tool. But in Zara, you're actually selecting whatever is behind this tool, right? So I can keep on um, selecting here and I'm just poking hole. If I click delete again, this deletes the uh, piece of the object that I've just selected like that. OK, so this is what um, this is what tool uh, this tool does. So now this whole resulting object is actually a vector object. So all of my selection here has created a vector object. So let me illustrate. I'm going to create another object. I'm going to make this red and put it behind the other object. So look, the object that I cut out from is now a more complex shape with some holes in it, right? So this may hurt your eyes. So let me just delete that. Um, so this is very nice because in the past, um, I didn't know about this tool or Zara didn't have it. I don't even remember when they introduced this, but to achieve this, I was creating all of these uh, sort of uh, shapes on top of the other object and kind of selecting them all and selecting them like this and going combine shape subtract so then you end up with the same kind of effect you're cutting stuff out but it's much more work and this works very nicely when you do bitmaps so if one uh, application of this is you import a bitmap and you uh, select that bitmap and you keep parts of it. So let me just illustrate that right now. Let me delete this object and import a bitmap here. So I'm going to drag this image here, import original. Okay. So this is my bitmap object. This is a photo. So look what I can do with this tool. So I can select again the marquee, the uh, re region painter tool, zoom in here a bit, and then just select 
on my object here. So if I want to cut this object and uh, sort of isolate it from the background, right? I'm making a rough selection here. I'm not going to try to be very accurate with this. Um, but look what happens. I'm just selecting this object. Okay. And uh, note, I'm not pressing the shift key. So when you stop clicking and dragging, the selection remains. But then you, if you change the nib size and you continue dragging, the drag operate, this actually adds to your selection. Okay. It doesn't remove things from your selection. So if you uh, press uh, shift, then the cursor turns into a minus, you know, a pencil with minus, and that actually removes from your selection. But as long as you don't press any keys, you keep on drawing on top, it adds to your selection, right? So I'm going to make a rough selection here on my object. Uh, okay, I've gone over the line a few places, but don't worry about it. It's not important. Okay, so I'm done selecting, right? Uh, just a tad down here. Okay, so now I've made my selection and um, let's suppose that if I press delete now, it's going to cut out the object from the picture. So look what happens. Delete, boom, the object is gone. I actually don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to keep the object and delete the part around it. So what I need to do is press this button here, invert mask, okay, or region. So I've selected this region. I want to go invert yeah, the same button actually exists inside of this menu. So this is one of the options here. Look, invert mask or region, right? So that's what it does. And now I have selected um, the reverse of that. So I've selected everything else but the object, right? So everything else in the picture is selected except my object. So look what happens. I delete that and my object remains on the page. I can scale it and it is now still a bitmap but it's a bitmap inside of a cutout shape okay so it's a it's a vector shape and to illustrate this look what happens if i click on the fill tool what actually happened here zara created a shape in the shape of my selection uh, and uh, it filled that shape with my bitmap so if i move this around look my bitmap is still in there but it is um, highlighted and, and masked, if you want, um, according to my selection. So this means that now your object is a shape with a bitmap fill placed exactly where you wanted it. But if you go to the shape tool, uh, you can see the points here. You can see the pixel, the points, the, uh, the Bezier curves of, of your object. And you can adjust if you've made mistakes, if you want to adjust your object. So like here, for example, this is not accurate. You can just drag this and fix it. Fix your selection. If you have too many points, you can select some of the points and delete them. So this is what the selection tool, it just creates an area of the object you want to highlight and it highlights it. And whatever you decide to do after that, like cut it out or invert it, it creates that object and places it inside. So this is pretty much the entire menu here has tools like that, right? So let's look at the next one the magnetic lasso tool. This pretty much does the same thing. It creates selections, but in a magnetic way. This is like the magnetic lasso in Photoshop. Again, I keep mentioning Photoshop because many of these functions are actually uh, similar to the Photoshop. So I'm importing this image again here to show you what this tool does. So I'm going to zoom in here, right? So in the same way as Photoshop does it, you select the magnetic tool and again, you have this pencil and you can drag along the outline of your object like this. And as you can see, the line, the selection tries to detect the edges of your object and tries to stick to it. So it actually it's a very quick way to cut an object out. If you need to move the viewport, you can stop clicking and uh, you will have this little uh, red dot here. So it's okay. You don't have to, uh, you know, you, if you start dragging again, pretty much roughly in the same area, it's going to continue the line or you can, you know, start here where you see the plus sign appearing. That's where you can start dragging again to continue your shape. Uh, if you if you don't have shaky hands, you can actually zoom out and kind of trace faster around your object. If for some reason the edge detection is not very accurate. So let me show you if you go here, look, um, you can see it's made a little mistake here. It's not a problem. You click and you can go 
uh, back with the uh, shift key to um, to remove it let's see if it works um, you can actually start again I think there and uh, or you can actually stop your selection just do it a rough selection like that In, in some of the tricky areas, it may be a bit confused about where the edge is. Okay, but you see how fast it is if we zoom out. And if you see, you notice it's it's detected the, uh, the edge wrong, all I do is just, you can backtrack and go the other way. Finally, I've closed my line and as I said, if you made some mistakes and it hasn't detected properly, as after you closed your line, or I think even during the, the, the period where you're dragging your line, you see here this is not correct. Um, if you keep using this tool, it you know when you approach the line here, the selection, you will notice that the pencil has sort of like a tilde sign. You can actually start dragging where the problem area is and you just keep going on the right path carefully and then when the tilde sign appears again you release and that corrects your selection right so this is a way to kind of go over if you've gone if you haven't done a very accurate selection look look here see it's kind of off i start here and carefully go to the other edge and release and then it's going to release that and correct the line you've made so you can go around your selection if you really want to have a very perfect accurate selection like this you go and kind of move your selection outside of the area so that it doesn't attach to the same shape again release and you've corrected it so this is how you do it it's very easy to do so again i've created the selection the same way using this magnetic tool and again i invert it and delete it so there you go my object is here again um, on my uh, canvas cut out using this magnetic again of course you see this outline is not very uh, accurate here so um, another way to do this is by using the shape tool and you're actually tracing your object with shapes and those are if, you, if you're using bezier curves for that they will be very accurate very sharp of course it takes a little longer to do and um, i'm going to show you right now so i know this is not on the same tool but i want to illustrate that fact now so the same bitmap again i'm dragging i'm putting it in here you don't have to have it selected and this time we use the shape tool f4 here um, i know i'm going into another tool now sorry i'm i'm being quite disorganized but to illustrate the same thing I just did using a different tool that is much more accurate. So you select the shape tool. So this is a Bezier curve tool. We will cover this in a separate episode later. But look, if I zoom in here, it doesn't matter where you start, click to uh, start and click here. And then you go in the middle of the line or somewhere on the line and you see the cursor changes to this little arrow you can move your line yes you can correct the curvature of your line this is called a bezier curve and you have the bezier points here look if you drag one of these points you can change the shape of your line look so you're changing both angles of the arc here so you can make your shape very nice and round and smooth right so if i wanted to cut out this object all i have to do is just create a shape to match exactly my object and uh, let me just do this and I'm gonna actually speed it up for you so you continue from the same point you go to another point you you select little corners little pieces and then you curve the line behind you go again to another point curve the line this is a very very fast way of creating very accurate very smooth curves in Zara if you do not click on it it actually creates a straight line if you need it to be curved all you do is just drag the line and do it actually I find this and I'm mentioning another tool here from the Adobe group um, 
it's actually better in my mind it's easier to use this tool than it is in uh, illustrator illustrator from adobe they seem to have so many tools to edit lines with and shapes and curves and bezier curves and they do not seem so intuitive as the one in zara so look i mean i've been talking to you here and i didn't even have to speed it up because i'm nearly done with my object uh, creating this perfect shape around my object perfect line around my object if you need to uh, create a different inflection here so um, this is not a, a curve it's a two or curve uh, two arc curve um, all you have to do is just do one of them correctly and then the other one you use this bezier point to pull it in and then pull the rest out you have complete freedom to make a very sinus line and you are almost done here depending on the complexity of your object of course now i've got to the uh, point where i started and you need to make sure that your last point actually connects to the line your crosshair here is going to turn into a plus sign so there you go the shape has been colored black i'm going to make the last adjustment here on the curve on the corner so if i zoom in now look i have covered my object with a perfect black shape and now if i want to see my object all i have to do is select this object hold down the shift key select the bitmap in the background right click combine shapes intersect that's going to intersect my shape the shape that i've drawn with the bitmap boom and it creates the same exact effect that the other tools do you're selecting you're merging you're cutting out or cropping a bitmap inside of your shape this is pretty much the bottom line this is what zara does with everything so almost um every time i work in zara and i need to involve a ba uh, a graphic uh photo of some kind i i end up doing some sort of composition from the bitmap and either a selection magnetic selection or a shape with a combin combination like this a combine operation so this is very nice because if you zoom in look the corners the edges of my object are now very very smooth because they are actually a vector shape that I've created from Bezier curves. And this is actually the best way to cut out a bitmap. It, you won't get a better way to do this. Look, I put a different background here. It's perfectly uh, cut out. There's no artifacts. There's no pixels kind of poking out anywhere. So I've shown you this trick. I know I should have gone, I should have done this in a different episode, but because we've done this tool uh, section here, this is related to that. So I, I've shown you these tools here. There's another one, Mask Painter. If you wanna, if you wanna select a region of a painting uh, or a photo, you wanna protect and not cut it out. You, you create this thing around, you know, you paint, this is the part I want to keep. So you, you paint all of this red and then you use another tool to combine and cut out the external part so you keep your object so this menu here is pretty similar in what it does this one i haven't talked about rectangle region tool again this is just selecting a rectangle boom in your uh, image so boom i'm deleting it the same thing so this second menu here you can say you can call it the marquee menu if you want because that's what it does it helps you select regions of your objects regions of bitmaps and cut them out do stuff with them you know invert your selection all of that stuff so um i've shown you this menu here and uh, next time we will look at all uh this maybe part of this menu part of this photo editing menu which kind of a big one so it could probably have uh, several uh, episodes to cover all of these but um today we looked at this marquise uh, painter tool region tool magnetic lasso tool and you know like i said they are very similar to photoshop and i've shown you also how you can cut out an object using the shape tool here that we will cover also in another episode so thank you for watching thank you for your time if you enjoy my tutorials or you'd have questions please let me know and also subscribe to my channel and see you next time